Hello, welcome to Poker Room Review. My name is Crispin. Today I'm going to give you my top 10 tips for playing poker in Australia. This video is aimed at travelers from abroad. Those who are watching this video from Australia, leave your additional tips for our fellow travelers in the comments down below. Some of these tips are poker specific, but others are useful for anyone traveling around the country, including number one, which is understand the size of Australia. Australia is a vast continental landmass. The distance between major cities requires air travel. If you are from Eastern Europe or even the coastal United States, this is going to be a shock. Unless you're only going to be in one location for your entire trip, be mindful of this fact and adjust your travel plans accordingly. It won't just be a matter of a bus ride going from city to city. Number two, costs in Australia are expensive. Australia is not a cheap holiday destination for most people. On the plus side, there are high salaries, high standards of living, nice environment, nice culture, nice people, safe environment. Conversely, food, transport, accommodation are cripplingly pricey. If you come to Australia for poker, I recommend you book your accommodation well in advance, especially if you're going to a major tourist destination like the Gold Coast or Sydney. If you want to keep your food budget down, rent a place that has a kitchen and buy your food at the supermarket. Number three, rake is ridiculous. Rake was already bad in Australia, but it has recently gotten even worse at Crown Melbourne and Crown Perth, with the rake being jacked up to, wait for it, 10% capped at $25 for a 2-5 game. Adelaide has more than $20 in rake for a 1-3 game. Honestly, you will not find it much better elsewhere. The casinos tend to be monopolies within their city and jurisdiction, and thus the service and player rewards is pretty limited, with customers being generally screwed. Number four, Australian casinos don't tolerate clowns. Now, I know you guys will anyway, but while you're in Australia, you do well to treat the dealers and staff with respect. One thing I've noticed around the world is that perhaps it's because dealers rely on tips or because of the culture of customer service or competition. Some players get away with talking to staff and dealers a certain way. That is not the case in Australia and dealers will not put up with it. Moreover, security has their back to an astonishing degree in ways that you're probably not used to. I've seen players get well hurt by security because they've taken things too far with staff. More likely, you'll just be politely asked to leave, but that is also pretty bad if the nearest casino is over a thousand kilometers away. Number five, on a happier note, is useful for all travelers, and that is try the coffee. Australia's coffee is the best in the world. Period. In fact, Australia is the only country on earth where Starbucks failed. Aussies took one sip of that horrible syrup and retched. Believe me, when you are sitting at the poker table for endless hours, that barista coffee is a critical part of your positive experience. Yes, everything gets charged in Australia, but it is worth the money. Number six, kind of opposite to that, Australia is not friendly for smokers. If you are a smoker, then unless you are looking to quit, and this is a good vehicle for that, do not visit Australia. It will not be an enjoyable experience for you. Not only are nicotine products the most expensive in the world by far, smoking is severely restricted in most locations and certainly anywhere near a poker room. And if you want a completely smoke-free environment, Australia is an awesome, beautiful, and exotic location to travel. But if you need that fix, then just don't bother with Australia. Smoking has been effectively stigmatized. Number seven, get out there. Australia is, without question, one of the most naturally spectacular places on earth, with incredible landscapes, beaches, food, and people. Even if you come specifically for a poker series, extend your stay, break it up somehow, and go do some other things. If you're gonna come all this way to Australia, then you should absolutely experience the comparative advantage of this country, and that is its natural wonder. Number eight, and this one's important. When you come to a poker table in Australia, ask immediately about any special rules. Don't just assume them. 
In Australia, casinos are rule sticklers and decisions will be made by the letter of the rule. I will give you a story that is 100% true that will astound you. There was a casino in rural Australia that had a fold line around the middle of the table. Any card that goes face down across that line for any reason is dead. There is no exception. So much so that there was a case where a guy had all his chips in the middle. The person next to him knocked his beer over by accident. The beer spread across the table and lifted up the cards, which floated over the fold line, and the hand was dead. They protested it with the floor staff. They went right upstairs. Everything, nothing could be changed. The chips just automatically went to the opposing player. That's how serious they take these things, and you can be stung by it. There's nothing you can do. So you might be in a situation where one chip is not a call. That's not standard across Australia. There are different places with different rules, and you might get angled that way. So keep that in mind. Make sure you know where you stand at the start. Number nine, also ask about any local poker leagues. Chances are that when you arrive in Australia, you go straight to the casino. But in Australia, in most jurisdictions, there are also poker leagues that run tournaments and cash games, some of which have been covered on this channel. They usually advertise on Facebook or some other social media and are generally worth going to. Usually other players who are regulars will know about them, how to get in contact. They will help you out. So do ask at the table, hey, what kind of poker leagues are in this city? Otherwise, make sure you look them up before you arrive because this will greatly expand your experience your options, and your entertainment. And number 10, make sure you have your ID when you go to the casino. Australian casinos are generally really strict when it comes to admission. Even though it's only 18 plus Australia wide, it's not you know, 21 or 26 or anything, even I occasionally get checked at the casino. So yeah, always bring your passport when you come to the casino. It's just one of those tips to help you avoid frustration. And I've got an 11 bonus tip. This one is also really important. Organize your cash before you arrive. There are two reasons for this. Number one, the foreign exchange offered at Australian casinos is appalling appalling. You can get much better deals elsewhere. So look it up, different money change places around the city, go there first. Secondly, the ATMs that exist at casinos have strict limits on them and those limits last for an entire day. They also charge for every transaction on top of your international fees and things that you'll be charged by your own bank. The ATMs also gouge when you make withdrawals. So make sure you get your currency from somewhere else in the city before you arrive at the casino. And if you can, if it's conducive, if you need to get more money, try and organize that again somewhere outside of the casino because you really do get ripped off that way. Now, I know one of the themes of this video is that everything's expensive, rake is ridiculous and everything costs money. I am not trying to deter you from coming to Australia. You just needed to know these things up front. There's also one spectacular exception and that is when it comes to taxes. Gambling winnings in Australia are considered tax-free, period. So if you come for a major tournament series, let's say you take down a you know, massive open field event for hundreds of thousands of dollars, you keep every bit of that money. So hopefully that'll make you feel a little bit better. Otherwise, coming full circle, to anyone out there, do you have any tips for coming to playing poker in Australia? Is there anything I've missed? I'm sure everyone would appreciate it down below. Otherwise, thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Goodbye.